Okay, let's just continue with the modeling. Also, by the way, I completely disabled the screencast keys now since it was kind of broken for the current version of Blender that I'm using, so I'll just have to deal without it. So, um, what I'm going to do now is, I think I'm actually going to delete the quad sphere over here. Uh, I'm going to click on the on this collection over here, Settler. You can see that it has this white little outline over here in the background, which means this uh, this collection is now the active one, so any new objects will be directly placed over there in that collection. Um, one thing I would like to adjust right now with the background images, I want to place them a bit downwards so that they're actually touching the ground. When I touch, I'm going to place them a bit further into the ground because you, you can see that the feet are are drawn in a bit more of a three-dimensional way, even though that the ground would be completely flat over here. So I just want to get the height kind of correctly. So this is kind of, yeah, this is sort of the height that we want. That should be good. From the side, of course, it, it doesn't match completely. So we'll just have to deal with that. Uh, I'm going to save. And now I am going to play some objects. So first of all, let's actually... <laughs> Might have actually been a mistake to delete that cube. I'm going to bring it back. I'm going to subdivide it two times with, uh, with control two. Control A, visual geometry to mesh. This will immediately apply the modifier. And then I'm going to, oh yeah, change the pivot point to median. So it's orientating around the, the object itself. I'm going to place it over here. I want to align this over here with the shape right there. I'm already going to add another subdivision surface modifier. And I'm going to go in here and in mesh transform, I'm gonna go use two sphere, which is shift alt S. And I'm gonna press one, and now it's more spherical. Okay. Now I'm gonna delete the top side over here. Might actually, nah. I'm just gonna increase the X ray slider to one. This way I can still see through the geometry, even though the faces are completely opaque. And I'm going to uh, delete this side. Okay, now, now I'm going to uh, extrude this up. And I'm going to extrude this in. Hmm. Along the y-axis. So now we have this shape over here. I'm actually going to, going to delete one side over here and add a mirror modifier and enable clipping. This way it will never move past the center axis and once it's in the center axis, uh, the center plane, it's going to just snap to it and not let go anymore. So now I can just select all of these faces, move them over to the side, actually if I go to wireframe, yeah. Unfortunately, the face is not quite, the face mask is not quite symmetrical, but that should be fine. I'm gonna move this over to the side so we can have this nice curved shape over here. Mm. Yes. Hmm. Actually, since I want this beveled curve to be perfect, I'm going to actually try something different right now. I'm just gonna, oops, I'm gonna add a cube instead and just extrude that one. I just pull it down actually and take the side, pull it over here. And yes. So we have this shape. I'm going to add another loop over here. I'm going to again remove one side completely. Add a mirror modifier, clipping on. And now I'm going to select these two edges over here. 
actually these three edges. Yes, because we want to have the bottom side completely rounded. And I'm gonna just bevel them. Actually, before I do that, apply scale. This will make it a bit better with the transforms. Yes. Hmm. Okay, so the bevel is definitely not completely uniform. So we did kind of have it right the first time. I'm gonna remove this one though. Oh yeah, again, reference unselectable. So, I'm actually going to just temporarily move the object here over to the side so it's at least matching up with the concept. And then I'm going to select all of this again. I'm actually like this over here, I would say like over here, that's kind of where the turning point happens. This is where the curvature starts. So I'm gonna move this like this and scale it up along these two axes. And move it kind of into position. Hmm. Okay, it's kind of working. Then I'm going to move this over here, just sliding it across the surface by just click and dragging on the gizmo and then pressing G again to enable the slide. And of course the same thing over here. I might actually turn on vertex snapping so I can snap them on the z-axis with these guys. Or at least, ah, I'm gonna eyeball it. Uh, this a bit up. Yes. And this one a bit to the side. Actually, where's that line coming from? Oh, that's the, huh. It's not really great to always see those borders. Can I turn it off? No, then that's also invisible. Outline? No. Huh, that's a bit of a shame. Hmm. Yep, there's no way of turning off those outlines. It's not really great. But I guess at least it's a nice indicator of the center axis. So there's something to it. You can just <laughs> interpret some advantage into this. Okay, I'm just gonna add the, solidif uh, the subdivision surface modifier again. I'm gonna remove these two faces over here. Remove. I'm going to select these two edges and use Shift E to increase the the sharpness you're gonna if you press control e you get the edges menu and you got all of these you could mark a seam a sharp or whatever and this is it edge crease and what this does is from a value you can see it in the top left corner over here it's going to replace the header from a value of minus one to one it's going to define how sharp this remains with the subdivision surface modifiers so this can be really helpful when blocking out the shapes. Hmm. I'm just gonna shade smooth. Uh, also, just having my own experimental menus over here. <laughs> but you can find most of this just in the right-click context menu. Okay. Interesting. So I'm just gonna keep this on. Hmm. I'm actually going to switch to the tweak menu just so that I can just like dynamically push stuff around a little bit. Right now I'm just kind of eyeballing it, but to be honest, since there is this little pole over here, mismatch topology, it will be kind of tricky to get this nice smooth shape going on. But I mean, we can keep this for now 
can come back to it later. I'm going to add a solidify modifier though. I'm just going to collapse these modifiers over here. And I'm going to move this in. Actually, I'm going to put it over here. Hmm. Interesting. Yes. It's definitely the limitation that since we don't have an actual edge here in edit mode, we can't make it creased. That's interesting. What if I add an edge over here and crease this one? Nope, still happens over here. So, yes, I should actually move the solidify modifier below just so we don't get any issues here. Of course, the smooth normals are also kind of freaking out over here since it's trying to average these. So if I go in here into all the way down into vertex normals, you can see that it's trying to average the normals based on these two faces, but actually, yeah, on this one, but we can fix that. Just go to normals, enable auto smooth, and anything uh, below an angle of 30 degrees will be hard etched. So now it's splitting the normals into two directions and we get this nice hard edge. Cool. So this is essentially what we want. I'm just gonna bring back this guy to the side. Okay. Also good note is I actually do have more references on my left on another monitor so that I don't have to have like references images in Blender or on the my, on my main screen. I can have as much space for my workplace as possible, like the space where I'm actually working on the model. So I'm just gonna go in here, add a cylinder. So we have this little bolt right there. I'm just gonna make it like, let's just, 12 edges, is that enough? Yeah, this looks good. I'm just gonna rotate that 90 degrees, scale it down, scale it down along the X axis over here, move to the side view, and we can see there's this little bolt guy over here. And now I can add a mirror modifier. But of course the mirror modifier is not going to mirror it across the center of the character but instead the center of its own object origin over here. So since I had this little helper empty right here, what we can do is we can just pick that one either here in center or click the little picker icon, pick it in the outliner. Or as a little tip that I actually learned recently is you can hover over the, the little uh, thing over here, press E, and then you get immediately the picker and pick it. It's all the weird little hidden shortcuts in Blender. But yes, it's not perfectly aligned actually with the surface of the mask. Eh, I'll just keep it like this with a little bit of thickness. Yeah, that's good enough. Okay, what else? Um, we can just continue with the body actually. So I'm gonna start that with just a cube, maybe. Nah, a cylinder would be better. So let's just add a cylinder. Yes. Switch to wireframe mode, or you could also technically use X-ray shading in solid mode, but it's conflicting with the with the empties anyway. So it's better to just use wireframe mode. Okay. Let's see. So we have the body over here. Scaling it down, all the way over here. Hmm. And the body is actually pretty wide, so that's interesting. Yes. So now we have this flat face over here. We can actually 
uh, we can actually extrude it one more time downwards. Scale it down on the Y as well. And now we have this little guy over here. We can remove the face, select all the edges with Alt, select to get that boundary edge selected. And then with Control F, grid fill. And this is often not really working right away, but yes, like this. So you can immediately fill in this entire patch. And then afterwards, nah, just push this down as well, scale it down, scale this little loop up, actually. Yeah. And. By the way, if you don't want to see this little pop-up window over here on the left side, you can actually disable it over here in view. It just last operation. That's the window. You can actually toggle on and off any of these elements over here. So the tool settings and the header or the toolbar and the sidebar. And I just made it basically a single like a simple pie menu myself to like just toggle these elements immediately without going into this little menu. Yeah, it's just a little a little experiment. Let's see how useful this actually is. Right now it actually already feels kind of like an improvement. Okay, I'm gonna scale this up a bit to the side again. Okay, so we have this little guy over here. We can again add the subdivision surface modifier. Uh, let's actually, oh, oops. Let's actually, ex no. Actually, I think I'm gonna, with Alt, Control, Shift, S, get the shear operator originally, but now I'm using, I assigned it to the shear tool, which is actually kind of nice. I love this little gizmo over here where you can shear in basically any axis and based on the viewport, which is amazing. It's pretty useful. Okay. And again, extruding upwards, I'm essentially just clicking, pressing Z immediately, and then having it constrained to that axis. That axis. <laughs> okay. And then add another loop over here. Scale it down just slightly. Mm. Scale this one up. So we have this nice little simplified shape. But yes, since we're subdividing it, we are losing a bit of volume, so that's not that nice. Hmm. Ah. <laughs> I do tend to rem remember the direction of the Pi menus, of all the different Pi menus I'm using, but sometimes I'm just pressing the wrong shortcut. It's kind of weird. So I remember there was a discussion uh, on the Blender development about like how many Pi menu options there should be. Should it be four by default or can it be up to eight? Should we have nested Pi menus? And I totally get, the. Uh, I think the the sweet spot we landed on the eight options by maximum is pretty good. Like it's just enough options to remember, but it's also interesting how I don't find it difficult to remember the where the options are, but I keep mixing up the shortcuts <laughs> instead. It's like no one was even talking about that one. <laughs> huh. Okay, I'll just keep this essentially the same. Selecting these guys. Huh. Well, I think I'm just going to continue. Uh, I'm, I've, I feel like I'm already getting stuck on individual elements too much. At this step, it should really just be about blocking out the general shape. So I'm just going to continue with that. 
So adding all the essential elements that we need. Again, the backpack is a bit misaligned. But that's fine. Hmm. Okay. Moving this in. Move this in. Hmm. So, I'm just gonna again apply scale in object mode just so the tools all work nicely. Just gonna select these edges and actually I'm just gonna bevel them. And then at the bottom of the screen you can actually see some shortcuts. It's not very easy to read, but by default you can just click and drag and it's going to define the angle. But if you hit S, you can actually define the number of cuts. For me this is really useful because I don't have a scroll wheel. I'm mostly just using a pen. So uh, if you have a scroll wheel this is of course not really an issue most of the time. But also you could adjust other options like clamping or switching to vertex only and all kinds of other stuff. So using the shortcuts while executing something is really useful. Okay, I'm actually gonna track this guy as well. Just bevel them once. Nice. There we go. And then we have this extra shape on top. So th this is pretty interesting. I might actually just go ahead and model this separately let's actually see see i'm gonna scale this down actually let's duplicate it and scale it down i don't want to lo lose the original right now so we have kind of this inner object and then we have the secondary one over here oh yeah before i forget split this down in the center, go to the front, and just face selection, select all of this stuff, and delete. And now we can add a mirror modifier. Clipping on, there we go. So now we have these two objects inside of each other. We can select, no, we don't have to, have to select anything, we can just press pre P. And then we get the separate menu and buy loose parts. And then anything that's not connected is going to se be separated into its own little object. But yes, we want to select this and press I. Let's actually see it from the side and then wireframe I. And scaling it down. Scaling this up actually again. Moving it to the side so that it's over here. This as well, scaling it up, moving it over here. And this, scaling it up, moving it. Hmm. Actually, I'm going to make a little cut over here. R removing the faces over here. So we now have this object left. Now from the side, we continue scaling this up, moving this up here. You can also dissolve edges, by the way, by just like going to edge select mode with two or clicking over here and pressing control X instead of X. And it's going to just dissolve them instead of deleting them. Pretty useful. Okay, same thing over here, I want to get rid of some of these edges, yeah.
Adding some more just to keep the shape alive. Moving this one, sliding this one down actually. Box selecting this stuff. Yeah. Moving it over here. Nice. And then moving this all the way over here. Now we have this part. <laughs> Should have seen this coming. So if you also just scaled it like that, just without any care in the world, we can fix this by just scaling it down along the x axis to zero, placing it over here. And then we just need to align it with the other edge. Actually, let's just align it with the concept. So let's select all of these, scale them down along the x axis. And then with again, with a shear tool, we can shear this edge and place it back where it's supposed to be. Same thing over here. Hmm. Shear. Share it in the other direction. Hmm. Maybe not. Ah, that's what the extra edges were for. So let's just add that one back. That's like the turning point. So we can keep that one. Keep that one. And all of the other stuff over here is going to get sheared. I actually didn't undo the shearing. <laughs> okay. Bam. Select, select, hide. Select all connected over here. Actually hide this too. So with L, select all of that. And then with a shear tool, just shear it back. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, cool. That went well enough. I'm just going to move this in now. Okay, cool. Save. Good enough. Let's move this further in because this is the sort of inset that we have over here hmm. yeah this is definitely still something to be figured out how exactly this is supposed to look but yes we can just continue to extrude this now just getting the edge right and then again Selecting it, extrude. Hmm, interesting. Yes, I definitely need to first add this whole thing. Also, I, uh, I'm i using the F2 add-on, so if you just select a corner point, you can press F, and in the direction that your cursor is pointing towards, you can just create a new face, a new quad, actually. So that is pretty useful. Just gonna select all of this and extrude it along the X axis towards the center. And then just fill this in. There we go. This is all just really rough by at this point. This can all be cleaned up further afterwards. Oops. Okay, actually select this entire face. Just extrude it. Okay, cool. 
just gonna box select this, bevel it a couple of times, box select this, bevel it. Box select this, bevel. Uh, box select, no, just alt select, <laughs> sorry. Okay. Actually, I'm going to select all of this. Let's, ex let's try it actually. Save, loop tools, which I can actually really recommend, and flatten. Nice. Oops. Now oh, this is an all flattened. This can move further in. Since it's kind of like a little bit like a snail just twirling inside of itself until it disappears at this end over here. Yeah, it's good enough for now. I'm not naming any of the objects yet because we might still merge and split them randomly just to get all the shapes. So once we actually get more into like refining them and adding all the nice little details and definitely being set on actually using these objects, that's when we can start naming them. <laughs> 